It's our pleasure to welcome in, right off the top of the show, Washington Commanders quarterback, Mike Sainer still. Mikey, what's up, dude? Appreciate your time. Uh, how you doing on this Thursday? I'm doing great, man. I'm getting ready for the Giants. Um, you know, just got out of practice, got to head into meetings in a little bit, but feeling great, man. Excited. Uh, happy to be here. Appreciate you for having me. Absolutely. Are you a big Halloween guy, by the way? Um, no, nah, I mean, not necessarily, not really. Today is my girl's birthday, so that's the biggest okay. get. That that um, clearly takes yeah, precedence. Gonna, gonna celebrate that. Yeah, yeah no, I, I I hear you on that. I'm not a big Halloween guy either. Uh, my producer is dressed like Nelly right now. He's got the bandaid on and, and the whole deal over there. So he's this is this is his day. But we'll let him have that. You have that with your girl, and then and then we're just gonna talk football for the next ten minutes. Um, I don't want to ask you too much about the uh, the the hail mary play, just because I know you guys have mostly moved on. But there was a moment from you being mic'd up with it that I wanted to kind of ask you about in a larger picture sense, which, you know, for fans that haven't seen it, uh, you were mic'd up and there's this moment where one of your coaches comes over and says like, you know, Hey, we gotta, we gotta give this thing the energy it needs to the end. And you're like, yeah. And you get up off the bench and you're right there on the sidelines. And of course we all see what unfolds for you. And you think about the energy of a locker room. How, how is that something that you feel like you have control over and how important do you think it is to the success that you guys have had this year? Um, just understanding that, like, you know, everybody's involved. Um, everyone has a role. So really just, um, like, knowing that, like, whatever your role is, it's important to the success of the team, no matter how big, no matter how small. It's always all hands on deck. And I think that's one thing this team truly embodies is that, you know, we're one unit. We move together. And um, we just have full belief in each other. And, you know, and a play like that at the end of the game, no matter what the circumstances, you know, there's there's never a point in time where you lose belief. You know what I'm saying? Like we we had the belief that you know we were gonna win that game, and you know Jaden did what he did um, and executed a hail mary, and Noah was there to you know be where he needed to be to make that catch. So just you know having that belief in each other. Mike Sainer still with us here on the Hoffman Show. And I know this is a tough question for you because this is your first year. And I get the sense this is how things might have been for you at Michigan. But I, I covered the league for a long time and have covered the league for a long time. And the interaction between offensive and defensive players is not something that is normal. I actually heard Devontae Adams say when he joined the Jets, like that was something that he was like, hey, like if, if we score a touchdown or if you guys make a big play, the other side of the ball needs to needs to go celebrate that. Have you been around a team quite like this and maybe talking to guys like Bobby, you have been around the league a lot longer. Do you find the togetherness that this unit has across the offense and defense and, and the 53, you know, 70, including practice squad guys, you, do you, do you have any sense of how unique that is? Yeah, it's, it's a true brotherhood. Um, it's not a team where the offense is with the offensive guys, defense is with defensive guys. And then, you know, you have your special teams guys with special teams guys. Like, you know, everyone has a bond with each other. Everyone is friends. Everyone is cool. It's all genuine. It's organic. Um, and as a rookie, this is a great environment to be a part of with veterans who've been in this, you know, been in this in this league for, you know, six plus years. Like, being able to be a part of what they have already set out here, the standards that they put here in the off season. Um, and then embracing us as rookies, just it's a true team. It's a true brotherhood. Um, and, you know, I, I wouldn't want to play for anybody else. Uh, Mike Sanders. These guys have been treating us here. Mike Sanders still with us here on the Hoffman Show. Of course, Commander's rookie cornerback. Mikey, what is something that has surprised you that you're like, oh, this is a little bit easier than I thought it might be at the NFL level? And then what's something on the other side where you're like, wow, this is way maybe more difficult or took a lot more work than I anticipated in the, in the transition from the college to the pro game? Um, if you want the full honesty, I think, transitioning wasn't very difficult because of how well Coach Harbaugh um, mm. I don't know why I just said his name like that. Coach Harbaugh prepared <laughs> us at Michigan. Um, like he ran the program like a like a pro, you know, like a pro program. Um, and he you know, set us up for success at this level. And so for that I'll always be appreciative of. Um, I think that what was easier for me is from a time standpoint knowing that Everything I do now is straight football. I don't have to worry about class. I don't have to worry about homework, tests, midterms, finals. I'm able to just focus solely on football. Um, and then I think, you know, the the tougher part, I guess, is just, you know, 
as a rookie, just getting adjusted to the speed of the game. Um, you know, you're playing against professionals, guys who have millions and tons of reps at the things they do. You know what I mean? So just that was a, the, the biggest thing for me when I came in is just, you know, getting adjusted to the, the speed of the game. Something that I think is, I don't know, I just had this thought, and so I'm going to run it by you, is, is specific to your position. But you obviously played a lot of nickel in college. That was originally what the thought was here. You've moved outside. But I would imagine playing playing corner either inside or outside, the difference in the hashes has to matter, just the amount of space. And, you know, if you're playing the nickel in college, sometimes you're on that field side and there is, you know, just tons of space because the hashes are so wide. And then sometimes if you're on the boundary side and they line up tight on that side, there's not a lot of space to deal with. Did any, like, does any of that translate in terms of the ability to play both in the league because you have played in both tight and wide spaces? Um, I, I don't think, you know, from my position specifically, it's made too much of a difference. You know, I think outside corner, it allows, you know, the thing I, I know is that, like, as a receiver, they do have more space on the sideline because they can line up closer to the numbers um, as opposed to, you know, when if a boundary receiver in college is in the boundary, there's very limited space with him being outside the number to the sideline is very close, you know what I mean? So um, there is that difference there, but I think the biggest difference is from, you know, college and NFL is the type of plays you'll get. Like in college, the the hashes allows them to run a lot more horizontal side-to-side east and west plays, whereas in the NFL, a lot more plays go vertically up the field, a lot more shots downfield. Um, You know, I think that's the biggest thing I've noticed. Mike Sanders still with us here on the Hoffman Show. Uh, what's something that you have really enjoyed about playing under Joe Witt? He's a guy that has a long history with, you know, coach up the secondary, so that's kind of his baby. Obviously, you have uh, great coaches in Tommy Donatell and on down the list as well. But what's something about Joe that, that people should know and, and that you really appreciate? Um, he is a phenomenal coach, um, and, you know, his, his uh, resume speaks for itself. But, you know, what I love about him is that, you know, he lets us get after it. Um, you know, he, he's going to, he's gonna you know, make calls that, you know, put us in position to be successful as a defense. Um, he has full trust in his players. And, you know, I, I can't speak for everybody, for, but from what I'm seeing, there's not one person on this defense that doesn't enjoy playing for him. Um, so, you know, he's a coach that I'll go in every single day wanting to get better with and wanting to win with and, you know, win for, play for. Uh, two more questions for Mike Sanders still here on the Hoffman Show. Uh, first one, just I know you can't give too much away here, uh, but how different is it prepping this week going against opponent or going against an opponent for the second time for the first time in your career and obviously the first time this season compared to the weeks of prep leading up to this point? Um, you know, just because it's our second time, we you know focus on you know the the things that they. Uh, where they were successful against us the first time um, and, you know, just being able to correct those mistakes. And then of course, just seeing what they've been doing uh, week to week against different opponents and what, you know, what success they've been having. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's always going to come down to what calls our coaches give us and how well we can execute those calls. Um, and then, you know, just knowing that, all right, we're playing our second, you know, second time divisional game, like, you know, the, the stakes are always much higher when it comes down to divisional opponents. So we just have to be, you know, ready, um, ready to go on Sunday and just be ready to execute four and, quarters. Yeah, Mikey, I know you might. Do you have time for one more quick question or are you like literally about to run into a meeting right now? And I don't want to make you late. Um, I have time for one more quick one. Uh, okay. Uh, you mentioned Coach Harbaugh earlier. This is a total fun one, non, non-specific to things now question. Um, you mentioned Coach Harbaugh. We have heard all kinds of crazy stories about him over the years, including this year, him going in ice baths and full khakis and garb and the whole thing. What's your funniest, like, favorite go-to Jim Harbaugh story? Uh, my funniest... Uh, honestly, I think... Uh, it would have been this this past uh, winter after the Natty, um, him keeping his promise to get in the 15 and 0 tattoo um, after the national championship. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, coaches getting tattoos, especially him. He doesn't seem like a big tattoo guy personally, but no, nah, 
Nah, <laughs> not at all. He definitely. I'm I'm surprised he stuck with it, and uh, he 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 let Trevor Keegan take take the uh, the tattoo gun and uh, shade out one of the uh, numbers. But it, it was it was it was cool to see. It was funny. You, you know, we were in there just all laughing at the moment. It was it was real funny. How do you handle the tattoo gun? He handled it pretty well. He handled it pretty well. I could just see him being super stoic. This is the man that takes ice baths and khakis. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Mikey, appreciate the time, man. Uh, best of luck this weekend and the rest of the season, and hopefully we'll talk to you again down the road. Appreciate you. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.